actually have more time, even though we're doing four projects than yep. we did when we were doing one. So even with somebody else managing them for us, um, we'll make over 90,000 a year of yeah. those properties. <laughs> Our first property that we bought was my hundredth property that I viewed. I'll halve everything that Simon says. And then I looked at it and I saw 25,000 written on a piece of paper and I felt a bit embarrassed about it. Yeah, and, and more importantly, being able to teach our children that there is a different way. Fast is there's a particular way that you're now buying your properties. I think is a really high value to tell everyone about. And without the education, we wouldn't have known what those high value items were. Check it And I don't think we would have done anything. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Property Magic Podcast, which I'm joined by Ian and Laura Sheldrake. Hi guys. Hi. Hi. And we're going to be talking about um, BRR, we're going to talk about HMOs, we're going to talk about replacing your income, so lots to talk about. But before we do that, would you like to both introduce yourselves, please? Hi, I'm Laura, it's my husband Ian. Um, Hi. We are both doctors down in Hampshire and we've got three young children and so life's pretty busy and I've just finished doing the Mastermind on Mastermind 34. And you've done pretty well so we're going to be talking about that later on and what was the strategy that you decided to use? After much faffing and running around uh, looking at lots of different things because you talk about quite a few good strategies. We do. Um, we decided that for cash flow was what we really needed initially. We decided to um, do HMOs using the BRRR, so making sure that we're really getting that good value out of them, and that's how we've done it. Yeah, great. And, and I know this isn't your first property venture, is it? So talk to us how you kind of got into property and then why you felt you need to come and do Mastermind. Yeah, so um, we're really lucky that we've got um, a really good friend um, who knew about property and we went into a property and, and bought something in Salisbury with him and that was a really useful experience for us because we actually understood what is involved in a batch of bricks renovation. Yeah. It turns out loads is involved. Yes. And the, the so that was great and it, it took a long time to get through and, and the problem with that was that from when we bought it to when we then were eventually after about 18 months of hard slog ready to refinance the mortgage rates had shot up so yeah. it was a great it was a great deal that we got we spent not very much money to make a great product mm. we just couldn't get our money back out because of that change and so it, it does cash flow and it's okay but we really had to question about how we were going to grow this further because I didn't want Ian spending every single weekend doing doing you know tiling and all, learning all these skills I felt that our time could be better used. And we recognised that there was an opportunity cost in that that process took us 18 months more or less and yeah. had we um, have used other resources we might have been able to do or we would have been able to do that a lot faster and more effectively. Mm. So I think this is a really important lesson for everyone watching this because um, I meet a lot of people who are uh, builders or skilled tradespeople and they they want to do the work themselves mm. and partly that's because they think they can do a better job than someone else or they don't want to pay other people but it takes so much time I mean one project 18 months that was just a, a house to a normal single app yeah. right yeah. whereas now do you want to share what you've done in in 12 months what you've acquired yep so within the 12 months of mastermind and actually really mostly in the second six months yeah. um we have acquired three and in the process of acquiring a fourth um, yep. property and rather than doing the single lets we did before these are large co-living so either seven or eight beds yeah so far more profitable and because you're not doing the work you get project managers in so you can actually do a number of projects at the same time and run them simultaneously almost absolutely yeah and we have released our time back Yes. So we actually have more time, even though we're doing four projects, than yep. we did when we were doing one. Yeah. And, you know, with with two busy jobs and three kids, people could use that as an excuse not to move forward. Um, but what was your, I mean, obviously you came and did the Accelerator, then you did Mastermind. Um, what was your um, learnings from those events? And I'll ask you, Ian, as well, because obviously you didn't do Masterminds, but you observed and, and you were supporting in the business, Laura, anyway. But what was, what was your, accelerator. I'd like to get your different mm. views on this. Yeah, you did Accelerator as well, didn't you? Um, so Accelerator was just three days of just, my mind was just constantly being blown because I knew there was something hidden in property which I hadn't found in our first project and there yeah. had to be ways of doing things. And I'd read your book and we'd listened to your podcast. 
But actually being there in the room with people who were all getting it and the conversations and the teaching. And I think at the end of that, I, I, I imagined that, well, I'd take my learning and I'd just go and do it. And um, I could have done that. And I there was people on my Mastermind Accelerator who were going to do that. And yep. absolutely, I'm sure have succeeded and done great things. But for me, I realised that I can see you and Andy and Hayne standing on stage and you telling me what you've done and thinking, wow, that's amazing. But I didn't actually believe I could do any of those things. And so we realised that we needed to plug in to some more support. And, and, and so that was the reason we decided to do the full Mastermind programme. Yeah. And I, I believe, we both genuinely believe that if we left after Accelerator and said, thanks, but we can go with our knowledge, I think we would have done something slightly better than what we'd done before because we had a bit more knowledge. I really don't believe that we would have been able to do any of the deals that we've mm. done. So our goal that we set for people, so we'll, you know, you can get up to £50,000 income in 12 months. And most people take two years or some of three years to get there, but we have some people who exceed that. But you didn't quite believe that, do you? So what was your first goal you'd set for yourself, Laura? So initially, I, I mean, I, I thought... I thought you were selling a good story, basically, yeah. and I thought, well, that's very nice, but you know, I'm, 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 you know, I'm sensible. I'm not going to be silly, so I'll halve everything that Simon says. And then I looked at it, and I saw twenty five thousand written on a piece of paper, and I felt a bit embarrassed about it. Yeah. Scribbled it out, and I wrote twenty thousand because right. I thought that's just ridiculous. Set something, and I don't know if I really believed I'd get to twenty thousand, but I felt like fifty was just. Yeah, but you massively surpass that obviously the projects are still being built but yeah. so so it's taking longer than 12 months to actually get them finished but you've secured those properties yeah. now so once those properties are finished what's the net cash flow after mortgages after management maintenance costs etc what's that going to make you those four properties roughly so even with somebody else managing them for us and um, we'll make over ninety thousand a year of yeah. those properties and so when you sat in that first workshop did you think you'd ever do that not not at all and I think looking back on my writing and going through the notes again that person just yeah I would never ever ever have believed that I that we had the ability to to do that and that the knowledge would make the difference and I think I think we're a really good example of why it's worth spending the time and the money on education because I think we may have got there in 25 years of doing a long slog and actually to think we've made that jump in I mean we it's basically been about six months of buying it's yeah. just yeah and we just we didn't know what we didn't know basically, yeah did we? yeah one of my favorite sayings yeah that was the huge changer for us and as yeah. doctors obviously you've obviously invested a lot of time and money in your formal education and your qualifications so I suppose it kind of makes sense to 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 shortcut that rather than trying to learn the hard way doing it yourself right definitely, definitely. you don't turn up to the hospital on the first day and give it a go like no. generally you have a bit of education <laughs> it did take um, us a couple of years to realize that i think which oh, when you look back definitely. now it seems crazy why yeah. why would you not educate yourself in doing something like this yeah or well, any fool can buy a property right and many fools do. Yeah, yeah. it's true. And, uh, Ian, I'm really interested because obviously um, Laura's actually been on the Mars program. I know you've been very much involved together doing the projects together, working as a team. But have you seen Laura change over the program? Uh, definitely. So in in terms of the belief of what uh, you believing what you think is has been achieved can be achieved. Yeah, um, that has been a huge change. Um, and the confidence in dealing with all sorts of different people, but we've always we've been limited in terms of time and other resources, and actually the re resourcefulness that you have developed mm. in terms of going out and raising finance from other areas and investors. Uh, the confidence and ability to do that has been uh, really transformational. I know, Laura, I know you said to me before, you never would have thought you would have gone out and used other people's money. Yeah, I, I didn't think anybody would, would necessarily want to invest in us. And um, it felt a really, really bizarre concept. We've always been very debt adverse as people. We're very, we're pretty money conscious. We try and make sure that we, we know what we're doing. And this idea of using someone else's money felt completely alien. And then when I looked at the projects in the other angle and I thought, wow, I can actually 
make money for somebody else. Yeah, this that's is the key, isn't really it? Really great. So we yeah. went into it with a homeowner mindset, and we've yeah. come out of it with an investor mindset. Definitely, yeah. I think. Um, but so I, I did the Mastermind Accelerator as well, and we did it separately, didn't we? Yes. Yeah. Which was an intentional decision. Yeah. yeah. To do it separately and experience it individually. Yeah, but I think it's great you've both done it because you both get what you're trying to do. Sometimes yeah. if if one person's had an education and the other person hasn't, you go back and say, honey, we're going to remortgage the house. They <laughs> freak out, right? So yeah. I think it's great you've done it that way. So congratulations, guys. I mean, amazing results you've achieved. Really awesome. And what I wanted to share to everyone watching and listening to this podcast is there's a particular way that you're now buying your properties. I think is a really high value to tell everyone about. So do you want to talk about how you've come across that and, and why it works for you? Sure. Did you want to talk about it? Or meeting? Sure. Um, so the, our first property, we uh, was on the market under a modern method of auction. And just, just so everyone is familiar with that, so you would pay a an upfront fee, a reserve fee of, of 4.5% of the total purchase price, and then would usually have 56 days to complete. Which is pretty short period of time, isn't it? Which is Relatively pretty, speaking, yeah. Yeah, pretty short. Um, and, and pretty stressful as well as a process, certainly in the latter couple of weeks and days. Mm. Um, but we got it over the line, um, but it was very stressful. <laughs> Um, then we went on and uh, with our second deal, doing that through a traditional sale, um, and then that unfortunately fell over after we had put in a little bit of money in terms of planning costs, uh, and we reflected on that and thought, okay, well, um, the modern method of auction was quite stressful, but it did actually give us security for us and the seller. So what about if we could do modern method of auction, but we could change the terms of the auction and increase the um, the term into which we had to complete? So that is what we have done with our subsequent deals. Yeah. So what we what we've done is we've worked with the agent and the seller, and now a contact that we've got at the auction house that we um, have agreed a reduced reserve price. So we don't pay the full 4.5%, but we also extend the time. So from 56 days, so the typical, to 160 days. So you get right. six months to do everything, which is fantastic because you can do your planning to get your money borrowed, get all your ducks in a row. But actually, the seller is still getting that security. And a traditional yeah. sale takes four to six months anyway. Yeah. So, but And they know that it's happening. So you're both day. locked in. No one can go anywhere, yeah. but it just gives you that time to get those things sorted out. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the, the auction house is, is a helpful resource. They do quite a lot of the, the searches and things for you and they sort of steer the, the buying process. And so it, it's a bit of a win-win for everybody involved in that they get some business, but they haven't had to necessarily advertise that property or anything. Mm. Um, and so it works. It's worked really well for us. So are these properties you're finding and then you approach the owner to see if you can do this or is it ones that are already with the auction house that, that they're bought in? So they were on traditional sale. Okay. And so we then brought the idea. So we, we suggested both an option yep. or modern method of auction yep. and explained what the two would look like um, because the, the key point for us is that we need this secured and so we're happy to go down the legal route and do a purchase option and say that we've agreed a price um, but for the seller we could still pull out of that and so yes we could pay them an option charge that would help with, with their comfort on that but legally obviously we, we we haven't committed in the same way and we put it to them that there is this option or there's this modern method of auction which actually protects you as a seller more than it protects us in that we're yeah. the ones having to put the money up and so we're committed and you get that um security and um they they've liked that they've been happy yeah. to do we that it's particularly useful in sellers who have already had a sale fall through mm. so they are then motivated yes yeah, so we, we always want to work motivated sellers mm. and we can then say to them we're not going to go anywhere because we're yeah. under an auction so it gives them the certainty that they often want at that stage yeah because mm. one in deals one in three deals fall through mm. and it as you say motivated sellers they want speed and certainty but Sometimes, as long as they know it's happening, they're prepared to wait a bit longer. Yeah. And obviously, all the projects you're doing, you're trying to add significant value to the property. You're that's why you're getting planning permission mm. to do extensions and things. So you need that bit of time, don't you? Because otherwise, if you hadn't secured it, you could spend the money on planning, which you've done before, mm. and then the deal fall over and you've lost that money. So 
it, it's a much better way of giving you and the seller certainty. Definitely. We feel it was worth the money to learn that lesson though now. Yeah, absolutely. So whilst it was extremely stressful when it fell, fell through and we'd lost money and we'd spent money on nothing, um, actually, we don't feel like that now. We feel that it forced us to be more picky. And actually, because we're so keen on the security, we've realised that um, we would walk away from deals that wouldn't give us the security that we want. Yeah. And that there's plenty more fish in the sea. Yeah. You don't need to become fixated on that property. And so we're now very good. And in at least one of the properties we agreed, we did walk away before they then came back and said, they said, no, we're traditional sale and nothing. And we said, that's absolutely fine. It's it's your property. You've got to be comfortable. Yeah. Um, but it's not for us. So yeah. um, best of luck. And it only took 48 hours and then they came back. And so, but we felt fine and we felt comfortable with that because we now know what we want. And it's, you know, you talk lots about, you know, once you've got your strategy, we know what we're looking for. We know how we're going to secure this property. And if one of those things falls over on the way, then we're going to move on to something else. And I think that, you know, you talk about getting to a no quickly. We weren't there for a long time. I mean, everybody obviously knows and laughs at me because <laughs> our first property that we bought was my hundredth property that I viewed, which um, is both embarrassing and also a great learning opportunity. Definitely. Because yeah. now we we don't we we view very few properties, and the ones that we do view, we know mm. if they're willing to work with us on security and things, it would work yeah. for us. So that concept of getting to a no quickly, yeah, again comes back to sort of saving time. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And property filter, now that we, we can, property filter can't put, create your strategy for you and tell you which area. And so until you can put that information in, so property filter initially was, I mean, if Guillermo ever saw our front cover of like <laughs> 69 different bots all firing off at once. Yeah, probably so, not um, the best way of doing it. It wouldn't have been no. a good example for the stage. Um, no. Whereas now, you know, we have four. Yeah. Because we know exactly. And so you're very clear on what you want, the clear. areas, the kind of properties. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And so it's it's a, it really works for us in terms of of that knowledge, and it it it's a process, and I know from speaking to people who are on mastermind now in the the year you're doing now, so they're sort of halfway through, that they feel how I felt then that like nothing's coming together, and I think you just have to get one lined up and yes. you know, and then they the the hardest is always the first, right? Definitely. And then once you've kind of proven to yourself, you go, oh, actually, this kind of does work. You just got to yeah. keep doing it. Definitely. Yeah, and we have tried to completely trust the process, haven't we? In that every month, Simon says do this. We've yeah, just done that. Yeah, well, obviously, and it's worked, right? You got the results. It's absolutely worked. And Simon it... says view five properties a week. That's what we. That's yeah, what we did. <laughs> and, and it's, by the way, it's not easy, is it? This we we always say it's not easy. It's not easy. But then, if you had a year ago thought you'd be in a position where you'd have four properties lined up. And they'd be, once they're all done, be making 90 grand. Again, you wouldn't believe that, right? No. No. I think for anybody that hears you talking who thinks that you're saying get rich quick, get rich easy, which is how it can sound mm. if they just hear a snapshot of what yes. what's being said, it is the opposite. Yeah. You can create genuine wealth, which is ethically created and you can feel proud of what you've created but it will be the hardest thing that, that you'll do yeah. probably. I mean, it's been the hardest year of my life. The most fun as well, yeah. but the hardest in terms of the amount that we've put in. And I think with property, you know, you talked about what you put in is what you'll what you'll get back out. Yeah. The problem is it's not linear. And no. so it feels like you're saying what you put in, you'll get out. And you think, well, I'm putting loads and I'm getting nothing out. Mm. But it's not linear. But the final point is true. Yes. That what you put in, you eventually will get and it, back out. And it, I think that's a really important learning because I think a lot of people get to this point where um, they are impatient. Mm. Because if you think back to when we first all started a job, we probably paid on a, a daily or weekly basis. So you used to put some time in, you get rewarded. You put some more time, you get rewarded. And then you get into a job and a salary, you get rewarded every month. Whereas in any business, in property, you put, might put months and months and months of effort in mm. and you don't actually have results. And But it's going to come. If you keep going, as long as you know what you're doing and you yeah. keep taking action, it's going to happen. But the problem is sometimes people are impatient and give up too quickly. Definitely. And I can understand that. It's frustrating. You're actually paying money into something. So yeah. you're earning in one job to pay money to something else, which is showing no results. And mm. it can be really disheartening. And I think it's for that reason, if 
for us, if we'd gone off on our own, yeah. I think we would, we are diligent people, we would work hard, but without actually having that continuing support, friendship, network, people around you, but your coach, someone to talk to and say, you know, this has happened, that's happened, it all pulls together. And I don't think we could have pulled that together on our own. And also, we talked about how time has always been our most limited as, uh, you yeah. know, limited resource in many ways. And I think without the education, we have tried to focus throughout the process in doing the highest value yeah. things in the limited amount of time that we've had. Yeah. Because we can't do everything, basically. And without the education, we wouldn't have known what those high value items were. Mm. And I don't think we would have done anything. Yeah. We were talking earlier about the first property that we went to go and have a look at. And um, you were saying that you probably wouldn't have done that deal if you didn't have the support around you because it was just mm. a, a bit too big for you. It was yeah. outside of your comfort zone. Definitely. And there's, there's a lot of hoops to jump through before signing your name on the dotted line, as it mm. were. And mm. I think we would have overanalyzed Mm. had a crisis of confidence possibly mm. thought oh are we really going to do this is this definitely right oh let's look at the numbers again oh it's very easy to talk and, yourself out of a good deal isn't it we would have talked ourselves out of that deal in reality yeah but once you got that first one done you think actually this kind of works it's yeah. then easier to do subsequent deals isn't it Definitely. And I think we imagine that we would finish this one to completion in terms of everybody would be rented out before we before we moved again. And actually, because because we're, we're, we're within the mastermind network, we actually have the confidence. Actually, no, we don't need to do that. Yeah, we can just we can have them all along the pipeline at different stages. And that's what we need to be doing. And however much you said pipeline, I I just didn't agree. I felt like, no, I'm a finisher. You know, I just want to get <laughs> one done sit down maybe have a cup of tea and then we'll think again and actually that pipeline we would have limited our growth so much mm. by it would have taken a lot longer to oh. get to that ninety thousand pound income wouldn't it definitely and i think your ability to to explain that to an investor of what you've done actually seeing your growth i think really helps so you know i've done this over the last five years it isn't is not really the same and now i want to go big you know it's really helpful to be able to see well, this is what we've done in a year so yeah. you can see where, where we're going to go. And one of the biggest things that you and I have learned is the ability to leverage other people's resources, really, isn't it? Yeah. Whether, yeah. You know, taking things off our plate. Yeah. And that's time, money and experience, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All of yeah. those. All of Definitely. those. And I don't think we'd have had the confidence or knowledge to do that. So an amazing year on Mastermind. Where, where's the next step? Where, where are you going to go? What's the goal? Goal changes a lot. So um, so as part of Mastermind, you get mentoring days. Um, we had Andy Gort, who was fantastic. Um, and so we, we are still doing a lot of work on our goals. We would like to build a strong portfolio of HMOs because we think that they work, we think they're great properties. We think that they are useful for what the population currently needs in this area. Agreed, yeah. And so for us, that would be a good thing. The the number that we're going to put on that, um, we're not sure yet exactly how many, but I would love to do to do some more quirky things. I basically just love property. I'm really lit up by doing deals. I love negotiating them. I'd love to do some small scale development. I'd love to look at some commercial resi stuff. Yeah. The, and that's the other thing. When you things. asked me about what Laura, asked me earlier about what Laura has got from Masterminds, I think this process has been enjoyable because of mastermind really i mm. think had we done it on our own it would have been stressful and less fun yeah <laughs> and your group are you know amazing group of people that that we've spent a lot of time with and it's just been a really enjoyable experience right yeah, well thank you that, that's great to hear and for me it's really interesting to see law you've got this newfound passion for property which is fantastic but actually ian you really like what you do and i know you you don't necessarily want to leave what you do but it's just about having that Choice and freedom? Yeah. Um, yeah, ha having that choice and freedom in the future. But I, I, I do enjoy what I do. Um, and I'm not looking to stop that anytime soon. But, but it's been great to do something together as well. Yeah. And yeah. it's just been a really fun process. And I feel actually we've both learnt a lot and grown uh, a lot through the process, haven't we? But you've also and talked, Ian, in the past about the fact that you love your job, you're going to work hard at your job, but at the end of that, yeah. we're not going to have anything 
actually tangible necessary to leave our children. No. Um, and, and more importantly, being able to teach our children that there is a different way to yeah. exchange and the your best time way, the best way to teach them is by leadership and example, isn't it? Yeah. Because they will look up to you, they learn from you, that's what kids do. Yeah. So rather than just giving kids money, which may not always work out the best, if you can teach them how to do it themselves. And as you say, there's, there is an alternative to the old fashioned concept of you have to go and get a job and work for someone else. Yeah. You can do different things and really live the life you want to live. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Awesome. Well, on that note, I think it's been really inspiring. Thank you so much for sharing, particularly that idea about the buying under the uh, modern auction conditions just to secure it for you. And so I think that's fascinating. So I do hope you've enjoyed watching this episode of the Property Magic Podcast. Until next time, obviously invest with knowledge, invest with skill. And if you're watching the YouTube video, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and also hit the bell icon to make sure anytime we bring out a new video, you're notified. I hope you enjoy the next video. Thank you so much, guys. Thank See you, you soon.